divorce it's lawyer? Getting, uh, this is uh, um, in the service of the relationship, actually. Oh. Yeah. Well, so what is it? I have a, uh, uh, a meeting about a, a job. What kind of job? Um, a PR job. So it would mean uh, leaving the journal um, and uh, leaving journalism uh, to, to be a PR, uh, to do PR for a firm that I used to report on, a tech company. You seem real jazzed about it. So that's what it is. It's cashing in. And why is that in service of your relationship? Uh, well, because... Uh, money? Money. And, uh, oh. you know, here I am. I'm, I'm still a reporter. I never made the jump to editor. Um, so, the, I mean, not that the money is bad, you know, and our kids are okay, but Edith is excited by it. And uh, I said I would uh, have the meeting. Don't do it, man. Why are you going? Fuck Edith. Yeah, well. Really? Don't. Indeed. You see, you see, you see, I indeed. said fuck Edith and you smiled. Fuck Edith. Why are yeah, you going? Yeah, I know. I know. I fucking hate her. Stuart, do you think uh, Frank should be doing what Edith wants him to do? I want to say no, but I'm the last person to speak on that. <laughs> you want to say no, but you're the last person to speak. Well, yeah, I mean, because I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, so why not be the first person to speak up against it? Because I feel like a mean? hypocrite by telling... Seriously, well, what do you mean? Well, Edith, in a sense, is, I mean, like my dad. I mean, she wants you to do something, but it seems like your passion's not in that, Frank. I mean, I know for a fact your passion's not in that. You talk about your journalism, you, you know, speak highly of it. and I know. I just, I, it's... I basically feel like I'm somewhere submerged. You know, like I'm sort of in a mud, a muck. Uh, I feel like I'm underwater. And, uh, you know, so I don't even know where my passion lies. Yes, you do. Really? That's a lie. Yeah, You're lying. So what are you feeling towards me as opposed to calling me a liar? I'm angry with you. I, I'm, I'm concerned about Cause, you, Because it I'm fucking angry. pisses me off when I'm called a liar. I'm trying to deal with this. I know. Did, did you hear what you said just now? No. Say because it, I was say mad. It, say it again. I'm, cons I'm concerned. That's where the anger comes from. You know? Edith is like Nina Simone. She put a spell on you. <laughs> I don't know. If only she were that hot. I know. Well, I know. I just... I'm trying to understand her power over you. Would you consider having the meeting today and committing to the, to the idea of coming back to the group and talking about any choice, any decision you might make? You mean before I Before you decide to do anything. Yeah, this so. is your board of directors. No, remember, no major decisions in life are made yeah. without first talking about it. I know, but, but, but we all meet in one week, so that's... You well, know, that's so why not tell us, Tony, tell, him, Tony, you're tell to Tony that uh, you'll consider his offer. And you'll say, great, give me a, I'll, I'll get back to you in a week. No, you'll say, no thanks, I don't want to be here. My wife forced me to be at this fucking meeting, and you're going <laughs> to stay here till the end of the fucking thing. We don't know what's in store at well, the meeting well, yet, though. May, may I say something without stepping on any feet? Yes, yeah, come Can in you here. hold on for one sec? I just want to say that, um, welcome to group. A week is a long time in this, in this transaction. Tell him 10 days. <laughs> yes, <laughs> rules of power negotiating. What were you going to ask Yeah, him? should we, should we uh, let Henry speak? I, <clears throat> I don't want to add to what seems like a miserable day for you, so I'm, maybe I'll just um, stay quiet. Oh, come on, Henry. No, no, no you no, have to say no. that. That's what right, this is well, for. Well, you know, maybe you're not underwater yet, but for my position, it seems like you're pretty close to getting there. Oh my God. And I don't know who this Edith is. I'm, assume, I'm assuming Edith is your wife, right? Yes. So Henry. Edith. That you said, I fucking hate Edith. And yet oh, you did. Yeah. Well, I'm and, free with that. And yet you're still succumbing to what she wants. So we, I got like 30 seconds. Are you done? Not really, but yeah, if you yeah, want. Yeah. But I mean, we can continue this. But uh, what I'll say is, I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. What feeling is that, Frank? 
I scared. Feel scared. Absolutely. Oh, well, it's scary when when somebody you do not know offers uh, their expert opinion on you. That's true. But you have a feeling towards me, and I want to know more about it. And we can find it. No, I know what it is. Oh, what is it? Compassion. You like me? I do. You do. <laughs> I do, and I, and I, I had feel, no idea. And I feel I feel compassion for the fact that you have such self-hatred that you can't hear a lot of the things that these people are saying to just, you. Just vote, let, you and me, you like me, I like you. I do. Oh, what a I gotta go. You're right. I gotta go. I, you're afraid of him and then he liked you. And then... No, well he said he liked, I had no idea. I gotta go, I really gotta go. Bye. Goodbye people, Bye. I'll see you all next week. Don't take the job. I will not do anything Bye. without no. 10 days. Bye Frank. Frank, we Bye, love Frank. you. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Bye, bye, I think you might have been onto something, honestly. Even though I was not, uh, I was very nervous and frightened as you began talking. But then I'm like, holy crap, he's right. He's 100% right. He's 100% right. Yeah. And you also went there. I feel, I wanted to say this to you before, I feel close to you because I feel like you've got a lot of, lot of things up there talking to you all the time. Um, not that you're schizo or anything, neither am I, but, but <laughs> that'd be all right. Anyway, so, and I feel like you, I have that as well, anyway. But you dropped in and you, you told him that you were feeling compassionate and then you realized that's like a feeling of love. And I'm excited for you. I'm really happy you're here. He looks like my ex-husband. You look like Danny. Oh, wow. I know, you don't know who that is. I don't. You're Henry. That's Henry. Not Danny. Not Danny, right. But he reminds you of Danny. Yeah, he reminds me of him. In he what looks way? like him and he, he talks a little bit like him. So what about Danny would make you feel seductive toward Henry? What, what do you, what do you, what do you want? And what I mean, I still want to fuck Danny. When we see each other, we still want to have sex. We just couldn't be married to each other. Wow. Because we don't like each other. But then why the seduction? I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I know. Maybe because I'm like your ex-husband, but I'm not your ex-husband. Maybe you see some things in me that excite you in the way he used to, because I don't come with all the baggage. Somebody's a PhD. Is that true what he just said, though? Yeah. That's weird. What's weird? I don't know. That I try to hide things, but I still am called out on them every week. And every week, it's like this funny little game that I play. You're looking at me. I know I'm looking at you. Do you want something? I want you to give me permission to talk. What would I say uh, if I was able to do that? What would I say to you? Is there something you want to say, Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> Is there something you want to say, Rebecca? Just unload it then. Just, unload. Just unload it. Last year, I went to a law conference in Las Vegas. And I went to a bar. And a man came up to me, and he mistook me for a call girl. And I played along. Um, uh, the next night, I stayed one more night in Las Vegas, and I did it with somebody else. And did you collect money? Yeah, I made five grand. Yeah, you did. And I took control of these men. I mean, they were both, like, twice my size. And they did everything I told them to do. What did you tell them to do? Well, the first night, he was a Serbian guy. <laughs> and I slapped the shit out of him if he didn't do what I said. So I would tell him to get on his knees and then, you know, proceed to do whatever. The second night was different because he wanted to pretend that we were in a long-term relationship. So we were saying I love you to each other. It was a totally different vibe. 
I'm very confused because I feel very protective and also a little turned on by you right now. And I'm just like trying to figure out when you say like this face that you're making right now yeah. is gorgeous. It's beautiful. I find you very pretty right now. But I'm also really concerned for you because I don't understand why you have to do it through a money exchange. Like why can't it just be like a guy you met at a bar? That's the thrill of it. What is it you want to understand about what happened? Well, I want to know if it's fucked up. Yes. Okay, so Sorry. let's calm down with the judgment. You know, what, does that mean? what does that mean? I want to know if well, it's Well, if, if, if the seed of my desire to do this, my impulse to do it, is from something that is unhealthy, that a place of, I don't know, a, a dark place or a, a place, I don't know, self-harm? It doesn't feel that way. Like, as I'm relaying the story to you, I'm kind of, like, turned on because I'm remembering what it was like and it, and how I felt afterwards. The only time that I sort of felt strange about it was on the flight back home. But other than that, I mean... What happened on the flight back home that made you start feeling strange? I think I just felt, like, guilty. I was thinking about, like, my family. Like, if they were to ever find out, like, my mom would just... I don't even know. Die. When my dad would just... He'd be home homicidal. He'd like find all the men and kill them. Rebecca, my heart has been pounding the whole time, not because I'm afraid of what's going to happen to you, but because I'm picking up on something that is much darker. And I think this is more about your own sadism. The way you described smacking that guy scared the shit out of me. Oh, uh, help me understand something. Is there room in this process, in yes. this group, yes. to uh, explore your sadism? My sadism? Or everyone's, just... Everyone's sadism. Remember, everything is in everybody. So if there's sadism in Rebecca, assume it lives in you somewhere as well. It lives in me. It lives in Tilda. I guess that's very, very frightening to me. Well, what, uh, what comes to mind? My father. When you think about my the, father. My father. Was a fucking sadist. And we had to put up with that. Mm. And I don't want to be like him. Uh, right, I understand that. But understand that as long as you're not willing to explore the parts of him that live inside you, you're at risk. You're much less likely to be sadistic, to invite sadism, or to be sadistic if you understand how he uh, operates inside you. You are a part of him. He's a part of you. That's terrifying, isn't it? It's, it's terrifying kind of exciting. and exciting. Hey. You think? <laughs> <laughs> could you help, could you help uh, Karina have some of that excitement? I think you already have it, Karina. I think maybe you should I sometimes do this as well, have these words, right? Because we're kind of trained that way, but... Safe, safe words. <laughs> yeah, have, us, have, have some safe words. But I'm talking about the word sadist. Like, and I, and I don't want to overstep with your uh, relationship with your father. I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but to pin him as a sadist, that's a lot. That gives him no, no wiggle room, you know, to explore the other parts in him. I, I, I just... Wait a second. Are you trying to make her feel... No, I'm not trying to make her feel bad. I'm not trying to make her feel bad. That's how she about. thinks about her father. But then she sees Rebecca and is like, oh, you did, you're doing this. That's, you're sadist. And I think there's a danger in labels like that. I think so, too. That's all no, I was saying. Nobody's here to be labeled. Mm. That's all I was saying. I'm in agreement. I feel really close to you, Rebecca, and it took a lot of bravery to say that to us, yeah. but also I feel like you're somebody who is game to explore those dark sides and maybe is also conflicted with what is a dark part and what is a light part. Yes. I struggle with that as well. So I feel very close to you right now. Henry, how are you, how are you tolerating this, Henry? What was shared here is something that I've never seen people communicating in a group setting in a way where you feel open telling her how beautiful and that you're turned on by her and that it's titillating for you. And I wonder, is this 
something that, is this a normal thing in group? Because in this process, uh, you're going to find yourself engaged by and, and participating in exchanges that you, you don't have in polite company. It's not like a dinner party. Mm -hmm. There's much more um, opportunity here to reveal who you are mm. and to find out about who other people are. Mm. So uh, there's nothing under the sun that you can't talk about here. You're not here to hurt anybody, to abuse anybody, but you're here to engage people. And if someone doesn't like something, it's their job to tell you. 